is gone and winter is officially here. So the time when we can do any kind of fall work like dormant seed plantings, fall spring, it's gone. But the time when we can sit and plan what we're going to do next spring to have great habitat is right now. Come on inside, let's get a little warmer and let's talk about this. Oh, that's better. Hey, winter is the time when we can sit and plan what we want our habitat projects and management efforts to look like for next spring. And today we're going to talk a little bit about pollinator habitat. We talk a lot about pollinator habitat because great pheasant and quail habitat is great pollinator habitat. They're the same thing. So here is my top 10 pollinator plants that I want to include in any kind of a mixture that we're going to design for wildlife. And I'm going to build it based on Pheasants Forever's Pollinator Habitat Guide for Mixed Grass Prairies that lists wildflowers in the chronological order in which they flower throughout the year. And I'm going to give them to you in the same order. And first out of the chute for me are the penstemons. One of the reasons why I like penstemons so much Things like shell leaf penstemon, foxglove beard's tongue, slender beard's tongue. These are species that are going to bloom early in the year and they're critically important to species like bumblebees when the queens are coming out at the very first part of the year. Great species to put in a mixture. The next plant I want to include in all of our pollinator plantings are the milkweeds. Anything in the Asclepius genus like common milkweed, butterfly milkweed, sand milkweed, and others. These are critically important to the life history of the monarch butterfly. In addition to that, these are highly sought after for nectar and pollen by things like honeybees and native bees as well. So let's make sure and put these in every planting that we do. Now we're in the month of June and I'm thinking about getting verveins into our mixture. Hoary vervain and blue vervain are two examples of a vervain that would be highly sought after and desired by different butterfly species for the nectar that they produce. But it's not limited to just butterflies, it's desired by honeybees and native bees as well. A little bit later in June and now we want to look at different types of clover and legumes to think about. Things like alcyke, white and red clover, sweet clover, bird's foot trefoil, alfalfa. These kinds of clover and legume species will provide great pollen and nectar value for both honeybees and our native bees. And we want to think about putting these into different habitat projects. But most importantly, in our green firebreak plantings, these are the go-to species that we want to put into every one of those projects. Now we're looking at July and let's talk about the prairie clovers. Purple, white, and silky prairie clover are three examples of prairie clovers that are magnum pollinator species because they attract so many different pollinators. Butterflies, honeybees, native bees, just a really wide range of pollinators that benefit from these different species. And a side benefit, these are legumes. So they will naturally put nitrogen back into the soil and benefit our entire habitat project. Wild bergamot is a species that's going to bloom right around the 1st of July and I like to include it in our mixture because it provides lots of different size, shape, and color to our habitat project to give us a little bit more of that diversity and it is highly attractive for its nectaring sources to lots and lots of different pollinators. Rocky Mountain bee plant is a great species to put in your mixture because it's an early successional stage plant. It's going to show up early in your planting and when you have a patch of this in full bloom in your habitat project, you will be attracting all kinds of pollinators ranging from bees to butterflies. They will be highly attracted to this patch of habitat. Hey, we're coming up to later summer now, and let's talk about sunflowers. 
This is the largest family of plants out there and we have many, many cost-effective options to put into our mixture. Things like stiff sunflower, common, plains, sawtooth, Maximilian sunflower, Jerusalem's artichoke, rosin weed, the list goes on and on and on. We have species that will be flowering for months in our habitat project. So sunflowers are always going to be one of the key options that we need to put into our mixture. We're late in the year now and let's talk about the golden rods. Things like Canada, late, Missouri, soft or stiff golden rod. These are all species that are going to provide critical late floral resources for lots of our pollinators. You know, golden rods might have a little bit of a reputation of causing hay fever, but that's unfounded. That's not the case with these species. These are going to provide critical resources for a wide range of species and things like monarch butterflies and lots of our different bee species as well. Hey, we're at the end of the year now and we have to think about having aster species included in our habitat project. Things like heath aster, New England, or willow leaf aster. These are the species that will provide the late floral resources all the way up to and probably past the first frost. These are species that are gonna be available with bountiful flowers and floral resources at a time of the year when there's hardly anything else available. That makes them critical to getting monarch butterflies down to Mexico for the winter. Well, it's sure too cold outside to be doing any kind of habitat projects today, but that also makes this a great time to think about our work next spring and our top 10 pollinator plants and our habitat project considerations because designing your next project with these habitat tips and considerations in mind, that's great habitat. <laughs>